If you can really bend time into a pretzel, it means you can meet your parents before you're born and perhaps kill them. Now, if you kill your parents before you're born, how can you be born to kill your parents before you're born? Or for that matter, let's say that you're a female who has a sex change operation and become a male. Then you go backwards in time and meet yourself as a female, and then you fall in love with yourself and have children. And these children become you. In that case, you have become your own mother, your own father, your own son, your own daughter, your own great-grandfather, your own great-granddaughter. You are a family tree unto yourself. In John's post online, he talked about many things that people have considered to be predictions. Um, and keep in mind that this was back before 9-11, before the shuttle accident, before the war on terror. This is back in the year 2000 when he said all these things. Um, one that keeps popping up a lot is the fact that he said there would be no weapons of mass destruction discovered in Iraq after a second war in the Gulf. He also said that China would be the next nation to put a man in orbit. He said that mad cow disease would show up in the United States and would become a major problem in the future. And John also told us about how his time machine worked and the power source for his time machine, how it was going to be researched and discovered at CERN, which is a physics laboratory in Switzerland. And apparently, about five months after he left, CERN did indeed announce that they were working on the very power source John spoke about. 300 years ago, Isaac Newton said that time is like an arrow. You fire an arrow, it beats uniformly, never deviates from its past. One second on the Earth is one second on Mars, is one second throughout the universe. Now comes Einstein, who says, not so fast. Time is not really like an arrow at all. Time is like a river, a river which speeds up, slows down, meanders around stars, and this we can measure with our instruments. Now the new wrinkle in all this, which is causing a lot of excitement among physicists, is that the river of time could have whirlpools. Whirlpools by which perhaps you can go backwards in time. Or perhaps the river of time can fork into two rivers. So in other words, we exist in this river of time. We measure time as we beat along this river with our clocks. And if it goes into a whirlpool, or if it splits into two rivers, then perhaps we have the possibility of moving backwards in time. Um, I've been asked a lot whether I believe in time travel because obviously whether I believe in it or not might indicate whether or not I think any of this stuff is real. So I got, a, I got this and it says, to whom it may concern, Thank you for taking an interest in my son and what he left behind. In close you will find a copy of the single best piece of evidence I have, I have concerning how John had an impact on our time now. This letter was written to my husband's father by a colleague after he met John in 1975 and retired from IBM. Thank you again, John's mother. And this is a letter and uh, that's her letter handwritten and this is a type letter which I'll leave you. Um, lots of stuff's been blanked out but it just says Dear Blank, congratulations on your induction into the IBM Quarter Century Club. The reason John said that he was traveling in time was because he went back to 1975 to get a portable computer that was manufactured by IBM called the 5100. Was it really blank years ago when we met on the blank project and wound up together on the 5100 in Building 30? Remember the meetings with the APL inventors both in Minnesota and California trying to get our unique requirements approved, which we always did. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but the latest theory they have about John now is that he fixed Y2K for us, and that's why things are different. You should certainly take credit for solving those little calendar problems no one else caught. I wish you the best of luck in the future, sincerely. And this means absolutely nothing to me. I know, personally, with my own my replica of the time machine that I'm building, I have a theory. I'm hoping that what I can do is, on the, the big dish that sits on the back, there's these little uh, kind of bumps, these uh, discs, all all around the, the outer edge. And I'm thinking that if I could charge those um, uh, 
magnetically with a very strong magnetic charge. As the dish rotated past the uh, back motor area, it would pass by another object that was uh, also highly um, magnetically charged. And as it rotated, it would cause the machine to move just maybe a molecule or two, one way and then the other way. So it would be shifting the machine back and forth. And if I could get that to happen fast enough, the machine would be in effect moving at or near the speed of light but ap appearing to stand in the same place. And then you would begin to travel. Einstein said that there must be an equation one inch long, no more than one inch long, which would allow us to understand the secrets of the entire universe, including reading God's thoughts. Now, Einstein himself failed. As a consequence, we cannot resolve within Einstein's equations whether or not time travel is really possible or not. Um, I have a 19-year-old son that spends more time keeping me up to date on what's going on with this than I ever will. One of the things that's, that was written up in the Hustler interview was the fact that maybe he is the uh, John Teeter himself per perpetrating the hoax. As far as I know, no. I wouldn't put it past my son to do anything, but I don't think so. Um, I think that uh, it's just a coincidence at this point that uh, some of the things that he's done coincide with some of the postings that have been out there. Whether this stuff is real or not, I don't, you know, for me, this is just fun to play with at the moment. I'm having a good time going through it. I'm often asked if I believe in all this, if I believe in time travel, and I have to say that five years ago, I would say no. I would say time travel is impossible. But now, um, after John has been here and left, it's come to my attention that there is real science now behind time travel. We have to use the laws of physics as we know them to then begin to extrapolate into the possibilities of time travel. But again, the energy requirements are too severe. Plutonium, an atomic bomb, simply does not have the energy necessary to open up gateways through space and time. I, I think that um, probably all people have had some time in their life where um, they've done something that they would go back and want to correct. So yeah, I, th I think that there are, there are times in my life that if I had a time machine, I'd probably go back and try to, uh, to mend whatever damage I thought I might have done.